Hello, there's Delroy again. Today I've come to a job where uh, I think the client said his um, RCD has been tripping intermittently for about, I think it's a week or a month or something like that. So um, I've come to see if I can sort it out. So I'll get in there, see what I can do. Right, what's the problem? This keeps tripping. All oh, right, so you've got, oh, okay. You've got a main RCD there with um, them old fashioned MCBs and yeah. it's a mixture of rewirable fuses. And the thing is, it's okay at the minute, it's not tripping now. No, as I said, they just say over the phone, it's tripped twice yesterday. Mm. I've never seen this set up actually. You've got a RCD there. I don't know what it covers because. And, oh, right, a car. So is that one just for number one? That one on the left, do you think? Or is it I, don't, I don't know. Like I said to you, I've never seen this set up before. I've seen these Manto units for years, you know. These um, MCBs, they're from the 80s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that's from the 80s. And sure. that one is a rewirable fuse. Right. Oh, yeah, I've never seen this set up before. That's You've right. got a RCD there. Got one here. All right, cool. Let me get my stuff together and then we'll see what we can do. No, yeah? Right, so it started about a month ago, you started said? about a month ago. I've had, I've had it tripped maybe about six times. You've had it tripped or checked? Tripped. Tripped, tripped. okay. Six times in total. Which one keeps tripping? Which... On the top right. Top right, the big one. This one here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to take off this thing and have a look there, because like I said, this setup I've never seen before. Sure, sure, okay. Oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah, I've never it's... seen that before. It's weird. Where you've got the, the little meter and you got the only blocks on the thing like this so they come to when they come to read they look read through outside, look yeah. through there yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i've never seen this before i've oh. also had this plug off uh, right every night. so so these fuses here down yeah. there when you oh, 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 right. so uh, switch it out switch it out on. so that one this one won't turn on this light this one this is this is uh this is that so right this, this is right. for that one and this is for in there. Yeah. Okay, okay, this is an interesting one. I'm gonna have to take the cover off that one. Okay, okay, okay. So what we've got here, this is some sort of old fashioned economy seven thing, because that I think that's the time switch there. Because it seems like this here is the only thing that's the immersion heat is the only thing that's on the economy seven side. And that RCD is for this. So it's an old fashioned split thing, isn't it? So it's an earth leakage circuit breaker. So I'm gonna put my clamp meter, set it on the milliamps range, turn it on, right at 0 0.2. So I'm gonna put it round here, see what I get. 6.31 milliamps, okay? What I'm looking for is something that's gonna be fluctuating. That rewirable fuse is still in there and I'm getting between 0.99 and 100 milliamps so i'm going to switch these on one at a time and see if i get any fluctuation now that's giving me 2.5 hole i've got to make a note of that actually so that's all the readings i'm getting for this side this one's fed separately so i need to put it around the, the phasing neutral that's going up there when i've got them all switched on because remember this one's tripping that one eight so we can forget about that one this is the one i need to sort out when they're all switched on like now, I get a total of 6.5 milliamps. But when I switch them on individually, the readings that I get add up to 9.41 milliamps. And with this one in or out, with all these, with all these ones switched off and this one in, I get 0.4 milliamps. Take it out, it's still 0 0.4, 0 0.9, goes up to about 100 milliamps. So I'm not... 100% sure why that is. So what I'm going to do now is test this earth leakage circuit breaker to see what it's tripping at. I'm just thinking with an earth leakage circuit breaker is that slightly different to an RCD. They used to be called um, earth leakage circuit breakers now they're called RCDs but is, I, I, I don't know if there's a slight difference between yeah, exactly. them. You know? That's what I'm trying to find out. So because with an RCD, you just put. A, I've got, I was going to put a ramp test on this. I'll still do it to see uh -huh. why it trips out at that. Okay. All right. So cool. that's the right. I was trying to get this cover off, but um, it might break, so I'm going to have to take this frame off. Right. There's my unit with the cover off. But then it wasn't easy because there's no access to these screws here. So this side was okay, but that side wasn't. See that? Simple things first, I'm going to just make sure that things are tight.
Okay. See that 30 amp there? The lighting comes off that because the lighting comes off the ring. Okay. Right, so here's our ramp test. Right, 27 milliamps, that's perfect. Your earth leakage or RCD, it's the same thing. It's fine. No fluctuations in any other circuits. RCD is working fine. So what's causing it? As a last resort, I'm going to do an insulation resistance test on each circuit. I can't get to the earth because the earth terminal's at the back there. So you'd have to take all that out. So you can't get to the individual earths. Just connect it to the earth block here, hopefully. The first circuit is giving me phase and neutral down to earth. It's giving me 999, but is that true? Yeah. This is the, the lights, the sockets, 31.3 mg, so that should be fine. Let's just test the other ring circuit. So that's fine, isn't it? Right, so I've got the fuse board back in position. That, I think there should, yeah, there should be something here to hold that in like that. Yeah, well that's it, that's, that's how it should be, so. Yeah, so I've got it all back, or your circuits are all back on. Uh -huh. And all I can say is we've exhausted everything, the RCD is operating how it should operate. Your circuits, like I couldn't see any fluctuation to say that one of these circuits was um, faulty. I've done insulation resistance tests to the best I could and it all comes up, you know, decent, good. Okay. So the only thing I can say that I would suggest is probably get a portable appliance test done on all your appliances. Because if it's happening at night, it could be something that's just plugged in overnight. A uh, guy wants to check his inversion into, because he says, this um, kept blowing or something. Then it's not that early. Oh, Plumbers might have done a decent connection there. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Right, you said this was this was dead, yeah? No, this this is this is alive, mate. I've just turned it off, right? Because I was trying to do a test on it. Now it's dead, which is like what I thought. That one there, which is on the timer, which is right, which is what I thought. So that's alive. That's the one, that's the one here, like? Yeah, that's the one that's on, over the far corner. So that's what I was trying to explain to you. The one that's on, what's it say, on, on uh, restricted. The unrestricted is this one here. Yeah, the that's for the top one. The top one is on the normal electricity side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Because it's got to eat up the whole tank. It does that overnight. So that's okay. what I was trying to but explain. Why is it on now then, if it's meant to be on overnight? I'm well, confused what's it should on be. Here. That's what I was saying to you. I said it shouldn't be on. If anyone that's on the timer shouldn't be on, but it's on. Yeah, okay. So this is what I, so I don't know. So it's nice to know what's going on here because something is up with the boiler. For sure, at the very least, we lo we ran out of hot water the other day and it carries on heating. So if you have a timer well, thing we have on. Well, oh, yeah. the fact that it's on now means it's not operating properly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that's come about. But that's also meant to be set to only like 50 degrees. We get boiler, we get water that's like 80 degrees coming out of that tank. Right, okay, well, if that's the case, if the temperature is getting really hot, that's not a good thing. Well, the setup is wrong because There's like I said, wrong, yeah, this yeah. one shouldn't be on. It should yeah. come on at night time. Anyway, that's the end of that one. I'm never really satisfied. I, it's not happened often when I can't pinpoint a fault because, you know, that's, that's what I do. That's an unusual one there. I've exhausted all the tests that I know to do um, and I couldn't see, I couldn't find what was causing it. It's a funny guy though, because anything I mention, he goes on the internet and searches for it and start telling me this and telling me that. He's enthusiastic. I had an idea that I put to him because he says he's going to renovate within the set next six months. I might be in contact with him soon and, and see if I can do anything to resolve it. Anyway, see you soon. Bye.